Hi, good morning, uh, welcome back to visual effects and post-production. Today we are going to talk about motion graphics for visual effects. So basically we are uh, going to be talking about uh, After Effects. This is the main software uh, for creating a raster-based uh, animation, uh, but also to edit, uh, color grading, uh, to add uh, motion graphics and is extensively used in uh, animation to create photorealistic uh, effects. We are going to be introducing you to the main tools within After Effects. Remember After Effects and Unreal are the two software supported in this uh, module. And we are going to see some examples of demo reels in animation and motion graphics and special effects. We are going to see as well what are the tools you are maybe using in this exercise, this basic exercise we have designed for this very first uh, week of work with uh, After Effects. So you might be familiar already with uh, this concept of principles of animation. Animation is going to be applied in our case when we talk about motion graphics when we talk about the animation of uh, titles or uh, small graphics uh, that are, uh, let's say, extra dietic because uh, they are not going to be part of the narration, they're going to be part of another narration. Like, for example, adding a title like presented by. It's not really about uh, animating someone presenting something because we are not talking about animation. This module is usually uh, addressed to visual effects, to cut scenes, to openings, endings, and things like that, not to animation. Still, it's important to understand that animation, and to some extent motion graphics, is about the storytelling. It's not about capturing reality. So we will have to work with these two elements, the element of uh, narrations, the narration of titles, and the elements of capturing uh, reality as well when you work with uh, visual effects. Let's see some examples of what I mean when I refer to motion graphics. In this first uh, demo reel, you can see some small examples uh, of integration between video and uh, titles, TV, data. This is a good example of the possibilities of this media. I guess this is, uh, this is enough for you to understand the possibilities. This other artist, uh, Rodi Aiden, is uh, uh, providing here examples of visual effects using After Effects, and they are sometimes of uh, great quality. Okay, uh, the difference here uh, between motion graphics and uh, special effects or visual effects might be unclear for you. And it's not really a big issue. Motion graphics refers to the animation of different elements, and then visual effects refer to the treatment of a realistic image to 
pretend to be real. So obviously, if we were uh, only working with uh, visual effects, we would be working either with uh, fantastic uh, movies, like uh, the creation of dragons or superhero powers or things like that, or we would be as well editing uh, images and creating shots that might not be perceived by the audience, okay? So uh, we are in this module working with both elements, with motion graphics and with visual effects. So let's uh, start by reviewing the uh, main tools within After Effects. First of all, keyframes. Well, as you might know already, if you obviously are familiar with many different kinds of software, keyframes are a basic element when constructing our timelines. Keyframes in After Effects can be uh, presenting uh, different paths. So that is, uh, or that would be the spatial path that the keyframe can do uh, during uh, the time it's presented in the canvas. So, for example, roller coaster or use shape or just a linear uh, movement. Uh, obviously, the possibilities are uh, several, are infinite. You can do as many shapes as, as you want. The basic difference between uh, digital and uh, traditional animation is going to be that in digital animation you can use interpolation. Just uh, by saying to the computer that you have two positions and uh, telling the computer what is going to be the path between these two positions, the computer will be able to uh, move the object uh, during the time you set. This would be a particular different case of uh, keyframes because this one would be 3D, would be three uh, dimensions, three different kinds of points indicating X, Y, and Z, okay? Uh, the dimensions where your object can be or, or can move to. When representing these keyframes in a um, temporal way, you will have different shapes and uh, Understanding the shapes, but more importantly, understanding the time curves this represent is the purpose, is the goal of the exercise that we have designed it, including one called basic and this other one called flying logo, where you can practice these uh, uh, different uh, keyframes uh, kinds. These links are for you to explore as part of an extra exercise it's just a way of uh, being exposed to other portfolios to uh, understand better what are the possibilities uh, using After Effects. I think uh, these are also good examples of uh, animations that are intended to be purely real, like for example particles, uh, which should be considered pure uh, visual effects. And these uh, are going to be, anyway, uh, well explored uh, through the module uh, in future lessons. So another example would be uh, time remapping. Okay, all time ramps, uh, all kind of effects related to the manipulation of time. Uh, in order to perform this, it's convenient to understand well uh, all kinds of um, uh, cameras and understand the possibilities within your uh, your equipment, okay, your recording equipment, because you can always borrow a camera that allows you, for example, to record uh, to a larger number of uh, frames per second, which will give you always more flexibility when uh, doing time remapping, okay. But it's relatively easy to uh, create effects like uh, the one shown in this tutorial that you can see as well in the list. And that is uh, basically how to create this uh, uh, zombie attack by manipulating time re remaping and, and making uh, the character, the, the actress, to, to move faster and to be more violent in that, in that shot. Okay. The same way it is very important that you remember all lessons related to uh, the basic understanding of digital images. I mean, at this point in level six, you should be uh, well informed 
about the difference between vector and raster images. What are the difference between uh, color systems or, uh, for example, what is the role of a video compression or a, a image compression, depending on, on what kind of file we are talking about. You should know as well something about sound. In the case of uh, vector images, raster images, just uh, pointing out that this uh, After Effects is uh, uh, a program that works with rasters. It means that if you, for example, uh, import um, files from Illustrator, those might need to be rasterized. Okay, you wouldn't probably appreciate any kind of loss of quality in that, but uh, you might uh, need to understand that this is not an automatic process, it needs to be uh, done by the computer, so it might uh, make your framework slower. It might be a good idea always to uh, prepare conveniently your animations uh, in Photoshop. Um, we'll see some examples on that uh, on our exercise. The integration with Photoshop is basic. I mean, at least at, at this very first level, uh, it's going to give you a good understanding of the tool from the beginning if you are good with Photoshop. This might be also the occasion to uh, uh, think critically about your knowledge of Photoshop. Try to think that there are many different advanced features you might not be familiar with. So uh, updating your knowledge of Photoshop can be also a very uh, good thing to do uh, when uh, thinking about the assignments of this module. For example, all the vocabulary about uh, the use of layers, the use of uh, channels and masks can be perfectly valid if you are experienced with Photoshop. And uh, you need to be uh, very aware that all the things are following a very similar logic, like for example, the blending modes. As well, the basics of understanding uh, video quality, video compression, video ratios, and uh, uh, the pixel aspect ratio, for example. Depending on the source of your material, you might need to interpret the footage. That means uh, create a frame blending that is compatible with the rest of the materials you are working with. This happens when you are working with videos that have a different uh, frame rate. For example, a European uh, video uh, encoded as uh, a PAL BG video, 25 frames per second. And then when you want to mix that with uh, an American or Japanese or South American uh, uh, video that might be uh, following a different color system and as well a different frame rate. You need to be very aware of all these technical features because that is going to affect directly to the quality of your production. We are not going to cover these aspects, but we uh, can always uh, provide you with reference and with sources to uh, learn about these things. In relation to sound, it's important to understand that After Effects is not the software to work with sound. After Effects uh, is very well integrated with uh, Adobe Creative Suite. So you can always uh, just copy the clips, go to Audition, manipulate the sound, and then paste them again within the uh, After Effects. And that would uh, totally work. Uh, you can do the same uh, working with Premiere when you want to edit uh, videos, which is uh, maybe a good idea because as well, After Effects is not maybe the best environment to edit video it's uh, the best environment to create uh, motion graphics and to uh, manipulate the image within your videos. As commented before, if you are familiar with uh, Photoshop, you should be aware of the use of masks, but in Photoshop, you usually call them selections. Masks uh, in After Effects are going to be a basic way of working. Uh, it's very rare that you're going to construct uh, projects that don't, doesn't have any kind of masks or uh, channels. In contrast to other post-production uh, softwares, uh, 
After Effects has the ability of creating the mask directly on the image. So we will see that we can draw the part of the image that we want to modify. Okay, this is a uh, very different in other professional softwares that are working with nodes. Uh, this uh, software is prepared to work with layers and that is why it is so uh, easy and so uh, understandable and so well uh, uh, prepared for the people who has uh, already some understanding of Photoshop. Of course, uh, it's called After Effects for a reason and you have a large variety of, of different uh, effects within uh, the software. Uh, most of them are similar to what you can do in, in Photoshop. So um, uh, all the kinds of software more sophisticated might need the installation of the uh, party plugins. And sometimes those plugins are not free. So you might need to be aware of that in case you are looking for a very specific effect uh, for your project. Okay. Uh, this still is secondary in relation to the understanding of the Photoshop and the After Effects integrations. It is more important always that you create a good framework to uh, edit and to manipulate your image than applying a particular effect, which is relatively simple and doesn't really have any kind of merit. Very, very important understand blending modes. This is something we are going to spend time in future lessons when we talk about color or light. But in any case, it is important that you update your knowledge of Photoshop. We'll talk more about this in the lesson about Chroma in any case, but it's important that you update your knowledge on Photoshop in relation to uh, blending modes. And that's the end of the lesson. Uh, today we have had a first sight to the After Effects interface, the main components you're going to use. Now is your time to explore the exercise that have been designed for uh, achieving a, a fast and uh, appropriate knowledge of the platforms and the uh, main tools. Engage with the exercise. This is very important, even if you find them uh, easy or intuitive or uh, familiar to you because you have maybe played with the software before. They are very important. They are designed to deliver specific skills related to all these concepts. And if you don't get them or you don't understand them, you can always uh, ask uh, your uh, coordinators, me and Darren, for any kind of support. And maybe we can explain you uh, the tool or we can give you more uh, examples or anything like that. It is really, really important you do these exercises uh, from the beginning to the end. So you can see all the different skills that uh, are involved, all the different tools within the software that are involved in this exercise. In relation to the reference today, the most important thing is to be familiar with the documentation of Adobe CC. Uh, knowing where you can uh, find the uh, information in the forums or uh, in the uh, handbooks about uh, the main uh, uh, tools within the, the software uh, because sometimes you might not be aware of what is the right tool to do something. Uh, so it is important to know uh, where uh, you can go in case uh, uh, the lecturers can, cannot give you a proper answer about that. Okay. So these things are important to know. All professionals will use them always. So these are uh, something I would encourage you to uh, have a look at from the very beginning. So that's all for today. Uh, take care and see you in the lab.